how are you feeling? Obviously, uh, you know, you're not quite in the UK yet, but you'll be heading here soon. How's training camp gone? How's your health? And how are you feeling about the fight? Camp's been awesome. Uh, we're in the middle of summer here, so it makes things so much easier when you're just like doing little things, cutting weight, uh, getting the cardio in. You could get like really good sweats in this time of year. So I'm just, uh, I, I wish it was this weekend. Honestly, we were scheduled to be this weekend. It feels right, like on the timing, but uh, with the internal clock. But uh, one more week just to touch things up and then we'll be over there. Okay. I'm Brendan. Home soil for this PFL. How does that feel? Oh, mate, it's about time. Fucking hell, doing them daft journeys all the time, nine hour flights adjusting to time zones and all that. It's about time it came over here, mate. And uh, it's the right time as well. MMA is getting big here now. It's growing. And the weather's good as well, mate. Perfect timing. The weather is good. All right. Let's open this up to the media because I'm sure we've got lots of questions for these two guys. All right, Mark, start us off. Mr. Wade, hello. Hey, what's up? Um, we've all been watching you fight for a few years now. Um, Feels like that last fight, and even in the season, you're more locked in uh, than ever before than we've seen you. Would you agree with that? And if yes, what's the difference? I didn't realize that it was you at first. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Uh, yeah, no, no. I I feel very locked in right now. Um, I can't lie. I feel like this is the best that I've ever fought consistently um things just seem to be like really clicking for me right now i think um it's just a combination of coming into my own like who i am as a fighter and uh and, and believing in myself and um that combined with my physical abilities uh it's just uh it's showing right now and i'm thankful for it okay you get it what's that feeling like in the in the cage now when you feel like you are dialed in and everything is clicking do you feel like a physical difference a mental difference from the past yeah absolutely in the past i used to stress myself out especially like you know the the ufc days uh i would overthink things a little bit um now i just really just enjoy the fights uh, i'm i'm uh it's hard. You, you fall in love with things. And then sometimes in life you fall out of love with things. And uh, I think there was a time in like the middle of the career there where uh, maybe fell out of love uh, for a couple of different reasons. But now that passion is back. It's been back since uh, my drop to 45. And I think that's what's reinvigorated me for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Breeze. Hey guys, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. Um, just kind of the same question for both you fellas. You know, what what do you make of each other's performances in the tournament thus far, getting up to this point? And uh, with all the the banter between you two, would you guys be open to having a beer with each other when this one's done? Let's start with Brendan. Um, first of all, performances. Um. Not the best, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've had certain situations going into them fights. Um, I'm very honest with myself. And um, and I think coming home, being back with my original coaches and being fucking injury-free, mate, like, honestly, that is the key for me. Um, and finally, I can put my hand on my heart, look everyone in the eyes and say that I am, and I can finally let everything go on August of 20th. Chris, over to you. Well, I, I think like I just said that my performances, I, I've felt really, really good about what we're doing in there right now. My fight with Lance, I feel like uh, it was a it was a tough one because I, I really like Lance, um, but I felt like it was really clean. And then I built on that with uh, with Kyle. So right now we're, we're just we're clicking on all cylinders and I, I just can't wait to get over there. Heck yeah. And when this is all said and done, would you guys be uh, opposed to cheering a brewski together? Nah, I don't like this guy, mate. There'll be no fucking beers or brews for him. Yeah, I mean, 
uh, to tell you the truth, Breeze, I could give a shit less, man. I don't really like, it's not too often that I've like become friendly with the guys that I compete with. It's not something that's like, uh, I feel is important in professional fighting. So, uh, I'll be having beers with my people and that's about it. Cool. Good luck, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan. Good morning or afternoon, guys, I guess, depending where you're at. Um, I'll, this question is for both of you guys. During that face-off, you guys were talking a lot of each other. You guys, uh, it was a little bit more than just business. It was a little bit personal between you guys. So I want you guys to speak about going into this fight and the history between you guys. And, you know, why is there so much animosity going into this fight? And uh, what's, what's, what's going on there? Go for it, Brendan. Um. Well, first of all, I didn't know there was any face-off. I didn't know what was going on. I was on the bus about to go home, back to the hotel. And then I was told, oh, you've got to come off the bus and do the face-off. Bearing in mind, I'd already been sat there for 45 minutes trying to get out of there and go home. So I was already pissed off, like, all right, where is he? Let's go and do it. I get in. And then, I don't know, we're just yapping. Um, I'm yapping. We're here at the moment. We both just fought. We're fighting. Um, there's animosity. And that's all there is to say about that, really. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I mean, listen, I didn't say a word going into the cage. As soon as he stormed in, I mean, I guess he was aggravated that he was waiting on a bus because he went right to it. Um, it, You know, calling it personal and then calling it like fighting, I think is uh, they're, they're very close things. You know, we both, listen, we both want the same thing right we both want want that belt we want that strap we're in each other's way so uh you're damn right it's personal i got a family over here he's got a family over there uh he thinks he's the man and that he's the best i disagree i think it's my division and uh you know that's basically what we were talking about in there it's i think personal is like you're talking people's family you know stuff like that so i think it's just a good healthy distaste for one another being in each other's way beautiful beautiful and chris i'll go to you on this one uh the last two losses that you've had over the last three years your opponent has a combined record of 30 and one so you're going into this uh you're going into this tournament with a little bit of a little bit more of an advantage you've had a little bit of those losses that you can learn from what skill sets are you taking into this fight that you feel have an advantage over brendan uh I mean, I'm a lifelong grappler. Um, so if you want to talk about and pick out like specific skill sets that are, are an issue, um, I think, I don't know too much about his upbringing, but I think he's probably a striker more so growing up, uh, especially like over in Europe, they tend to strike a lot. Um, so being a lifelong grappler, being somebody who wrestled at like the highest levels, doing what I was able to do to Jenkins and to Palmer, like um, it's a no-go for him to be on the ground in any way, shape or form for any length of time. So right away there, uh, that, that's, that's the big issue. That's the glaring issue. And for you, Brendan, um, same thing. You know Chris Wade is coming in with a heavy grappling experience, great on the wrestling, improved his striking recently as well. What are you going to have to do to avoid those wrestling exchanges and make sure that you keep it on the feet or even go ahead and try to get on top? Um, I mean, come on. I've been fighting wrestlers my whole career, mate. I really have. Anyone I've ever fought is wanted to put me on my back pretty much. Um, I've shown evolution in my game in the last two fights. I've realised that it's a marathon and not a sprint. And sometimes you have to take a motherfucker down and put him on the back. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously my striking is my advantage. I've got 13 finishes on the feet. And I know once I let it go, once the hands fly, people are going to sleep. And they have been doing my whole career. Beautiful. Hey, appreciate both of you guys and good luck on your fight. Thank you. Thanks, John. Curtis. Hey guys, it's Curtis Calhoun with uh, MMANews.com. Uh, my first question is for Brendan. Uh, Brendan, a lot has been made about uh, Chris's stand-up this season. Um, have you seen those improvements with his striking? And uh, I guess I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, 
he's getting much more confident with it, which is great. And uh, I don't know, it, was, it might make for an exciting fight if, uh, if that's the, what he wants to take, but I doubt it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see on the night. He's got two stoppages now, you know, the first two in his whole career on the feet. So, you know, I remember my first two stoppages on the feet. I got really confident too. So uh, let's see. And then another one from Brendan. Uh, thoughts on the PFL uh, expanding into the European market with the PFL Europe next year and uh, and all that, and uh, also being one of the biggest fights in the league's uh, first London card. Extremely excited. I've been asking them to come since I first started. I've been trying to get a deal done over here, trying to help them with that. The deal's finally done. Um, MMA, UK MMA is absolutely flying at the minute. Um, Leon Edwards is actually fighting for a title on the same night as me. Um, and you got Michael Venom Page, Andy Joshua, loads of people on the same night from the UK that are fighting. So it's a big night for UK MMA. Uh, I'm so happy that, um, that they're finally coming over here. And also, fighting in England is a different ball game. Tell them, Dan. A Thanks, lot of fun fighting then, in London, but I think Chris will enjoy it just as much. Yeah. <laughs> and then one last uh, question for Chris, if I may. Uh, Chris, um, is there any element of frustration um, being the top seed in the featherweight division and, and having to fly across the world to uh, to fight a lower seed instead of your backyard in NYC? No, there's no added element of frustration. Uh, the, only, the only thing I was confused about to start it off the playoffs was that they're actually in my backyard basically because they were in Manhattan. I was there this week. Um, so that's where I kind of like usually when we do an event, they're there at the same venue for the entire stay of the three weeks of fighting. Uh, so that's where at first I was like, wait, we're in New York. Like I'm the one seed. Why, why am I not fighting at the garden? But, um, you know, everything got, got picked, set, uh locked up a long time ago um you know i said what i had to say about that i i knew that the pfl went was going there for a while but i just also know that you know he made everybody nervous that he wasn't going to make it there the way that he's performing this year so they had to like the last fight you know they had to sign a guy that was zero and two in his last two fights so that they can make sure this guy gets a win so that he's actually there to perform because other, otherwise it probably was going to be Marias, honestly. Um, Do you mean because my opponent pulled out three days before the fight? Is that what you mean? I mean, look, your first opponent, was that a world beater? Uh, do I pick my opponent? Uh, or, I, I think you might. Listen, do, you, you had a chance to fight me this year. You told me, you said online that you were going to fight me first fight this year and teach me a lesson, didn't you? I will send you the screenshot of me asking my manager for you. I will do that. Uh, I will, I will yeah, post that. on Instagram after this just for you. In two years, you haven't fought Palmer. You haven't fought Bubba. You haven't fought me. How, how'd you pull that off, Brendan? How'd so, you pull that off? Is the guy that who'd, I fought? You fight, Tyler Diamond? You fought in Tyler the, Diamond. That was the wrestler? The guy Tyler. who I fought. Is he in the semifinal? Where the guy you fought? Okay. Where the two guys you fought this year? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, kudo, man. That guy's been a surprise, but he beat you. That's the no, issue. He, yes, no, he did. He did. Hey, listen, technically, you didn't win shit, okay? And the okay. second fight, they dragged you in there. Like he one of those top players. Oh, players they, hurt. they carried you in, bro. They the carried week. you in. No problem. Keep the same energy, bro. My energy is here, bro. Listen, something that you don't understand, you're playing on like, oh, he's whining, this and that. My my money stuff that with the PFL, that's got nothing to do to you. I will fucking fight you for free in the road. Do you understand me? In the road. I will fight you with nobody watching. And whoever comes out, they hang out at the bar and have drinks. You're a pussy, bro. If you want you're it, a- if you want it, pussy, let's lad. Rules. You want to change the rules? Let's throw fucking you, soccer kicks at each other when we're down. Let's you are, throw elbows. Happened let's in go. that back room when you went out. Let's when you do it. You let's coaching. do what it. Guys, what happened then? What happened when I put it on you in that room and you ran out and sent your coaching like, oh, what? Chris wants to come in and apologize. When, when you we're naked on the scale, talking crazy. Did you run out the room, bro? Talking about? Room. 
run did out of the run room. Out of that room? Fuck did out you run out of that room or was it me? <laughs> run out of that room. Who ran out of the room, bro? Not run out of that room, buddy. Who ran out of the room, bro? There's about 20 people Listen, that were there. If you if you think that I'm scared to fight you in any way, shape, or form, yeah, keep having the coffee. Yo, somebody get him another coffee. He's had like Who three already. Run out the room. Your little Bro, bitch ass. That's who. Guy's naked with a poster in his hand, like talking crazy shit and at my, White. And your coach came in and said, "Chris, that was my second fight guys. with you and your boyfriend. That was my second fight of the day already. You got uh, a little team going." Next question. next question. Yeah. Next question is right. Now yeah, you can see why we did this call for you guys. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Question. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Danny. A question for Chris. Chris, um, you weren't originally happy with the move to the UK. Um, now that the fight is not that far away, how have you, I guess, coped or, or what are your feelings towards going to Brandon's territory and, and fighting him there? Uh, you know, I've, I've talked about this a little bit before, but I, I, I'm genuinely excited to go over there. Um, you know, this is going to be my 30th pro fight. I fought overseas already before. Um, this is not my first rodeo. Uh, that it makes no difference to me aside from, as Brandon actually said before, it's a good point. Just acclimating to the time. Other than that, like I, for me, England is close, just as close as it is for me to fly to Dallas or to Vegas or to California. Uh, the the country is so big. So uh, I think it's great. I think the UK is, is, as you guys said, booming right now with MMA, as the whole world should be. And uh, I think it's a great place for the PFL to take their show because th that's where there's fans that really want to see fights, you know. Uh, in America, sometimes we get a little distracted by, like, you know, we got football, we got basketball, we got hockey. There's a lot of different things to pay attention to. But over there, they're they're locked in on fighting, and I respect that. I'm a fighter. I, I want that. I want those people that care. Uh, so I, I think it's great. And in a way, when the fight does materialize, obviously you ha you intend to win, and, and that's your main goal. Um, I know it's enemy territory, but is there some sort some degree of satisfaction that you will hand a, a loss to Brendan on his own ground? Oh yeah, it's. It's absolutely amazing. It's going to be the culmination of him being carried through the entire season and then to do it in his own backyard. It'll just be an I told you so, basically, because I'm um, a big, big, big problem, whether he wants to admit it or not. And I'm the guy. And that's it. It's just time to go prove that. Yeah, and one last question for Chris, and then I have a couple for uh, Brendan. Um, you you don't feel like he's fought the toughest uh, outings in in PFL. You feel like he's missed out on some of the bigger names, from what I gather. Yeah, he, he, listen, he I don't understand what happened. He was on. First of all, when they signed him, I don't even know who who he was. He said something about like when he first got there about me not being, uh, I don't know nice or cordial i don't we sign a lot of people uh, in the weight in weights in other weights i don't know everybody i don't nor do i care so it was just indifference it's a, it's indifference toward whoever the hell's in my weight and in my way um but since he's been here they're treating it like it's this like conor mcgregor situation that it's not i saw the live looking at the bar on his last fight it there was Four people there, you know. If even if you look at the live look-ins on my fight, my in the local town over here, there's a hundred people sitting in the place. So I, I think you know they're just sadly mistaken on what his draw power is. It's I don't know. It goes based on the Instagram following or what, but it makes no sense to me. There's that little bit of jealousy again. There he is. There's the little bitch. I'm not jealous, bro. Listen. You <laughs> live in a different country there's, there's different jealousy again I you love got it. football you got boxing and now mma there's fucking nothing else dude what are you gonna watch some rugby over here there's a lot of shit going on it's america okay it's a little bit different oh, you can see the anger in you in your face bro you are so jealous and bitter it is scary chill out bro listen you're using words that make no sense 
I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm not. And actually, you know what? I said this to you online. I am happy for as much money as you can possibly make, even though that you and I are not friends. I want you to do as well as you possibly can. And that's genuine. No, I do. Don't. No, you don't, bro. Yes. Why are you looking? Yes, Why? I do. Yes, I do. Fight with me. I hope you make a million dollars every time you fight. That's the truth. I hope everybody does well because this is a big family and everybody's got to look out for each other. That's how I feel about it. And, and from Brendan, um, what do you make about Chris questioning um, the level of opposition that you've had as well as your star power? Shaman Marais. I fought Shaman after Shaman Marais. He went on a free fight finish streak straight after me. Um, Tyler Diamond was 12 and 1. He's got one split decision loss to a uh, top 10 UFC fighter in Bryce Mitchell. So to call them two not good opponents is a bit stupid. Ryoji Kudo is actually in the semi finals and I had a last minute pull out. So what is this guy talking about? He's talking absolute rubbish. So whatever he wants to think, let him think. And if you think you're my toughest opponent, then sweet, bro. Next week we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, we will. And, and just a follow-up, um, when Chris originally had uh, some complaints about going to the UK uh, last month, um, you had quote tweeted him and you wrote, no one cares about you, they will replace you in a heartbeat. Um, do you not feel like he's one of the, I guess, staples or standouts of, of the division at PFL? He put some shit on about, uh, someone tagged me in it, it was like, uh, oh, I'm sitting waiting by the phone for my pay rise. I'm like, bro, the phone is not going to ring. Nobody's going to give you a pay rise and they'll replace you in about 0.3 seconds, which they will. Like, this is a business. They're not asked about Chris Wade, mate. They'll just replace him like that. I'm, I stand by what I said. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. Perry. Thanks, guys. Uh, Perry McMahon from UK Fight Site. Uh, Brendan, just a quick question. Um, it doesn't, I haven't, you haven't uh, performed at the U in the UK since 2018. Uh, how does it feel that finally getting a chance to compete back on home soil? Beautiful, mate. I'm going to have everybody there. We're going to have the atmosphere going and it's a whole different ball game. And I've got my energy behind me in the UK. It's different and I can't wait to finally do it. I'm just glad that PFL are coming over. Uh, one more question. Um, that, as you guys have said, like the, the, the MMA scene in the UK is booming at the moment. Uh, I saw that you was in, in attendance at the O2 a couple of weeks back. Uh, yeah. get, getting a, how, how did it feel like seeing the atmosphere there and what was the atmosphere like? Incredible, mate. Like, you know yourself, Dan will back me up. Like, he's fought all over the world, so have I. There's something different about fighting in England. There really is. It's a different energy. It's a different aura. The fight fans really fucking love it here, mate. They really get behind their home fighters. And um, I think that's what's going to make such an electrifying atmosphere in the building. I really do. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Cheers, mate. Jay Anderson? Hey, thanks very much. And, uh, you know, we've we've heard a little bit about uh, some of the other fighters in, in Bubba and Ryoji. And I'm just curious, since you both have experience, I'll throw this out to both of you. Um, starting with Chris, who do you see moving forward on the other side of the bracket between Kudo and Bubba Jenkins? Uh, you said with me first? Yeah, Chris, go ahead. Ah, uh, man, I think it's a, it's a interesting match because uh, Bubba's got the wrestling, the takedowns, uh, the control, but Kudo's got that right hand that he, you know, he's been finding a spot for. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, Bubba's a Division One national champion, kind of knows how to win. It's a, it's a three-round bout. I think uh, I could see him winning, like, the first two rounds or, or like, the middle – in the, in the last round if he needs it with takedowns and just being in control. I think he gets himself to the finals that way. And Brendan, you shared the cage with uh, Ryoji, so I'm just curious on your take on that. Ryoji Kudo is the fastest guy I've ever fought by a, by a long stretch. Um, he surprised me in that fight about how fast he was. He, um, he was very agile. 
And but like Chris Such on there, uh, Bubba's a national champion wrestler. I was pretty I, I managed to take him down a good few times. But I also set it up with the striking and that's kind of what got him down. So I don't know if Bubba, Bubba has to set his shit up. He can't just go in and shoot in off the bat like that. Um, very interesting fight and I'm going back and forth in my head the whole time. And last one for me for Brendan. I mean, we've talked a lot about the atmosphere in the UK and what you're expecting. And I know it's been a while since you fought there, but you know, when you are in the cage, do you hear the crowd? Do they play a factor or do you turn that out? Um... Good question. I mean, I did, you know, I, I did have a boxing match over here um, November last year. Um, so it's not exactly true to say that I've not fought in the UK for that long. And when I did have that boxing match, it made me realise how much I miss fighting in the UK. It was brilliant. The crowd, the energy, walking out, just loving it. And then just being in there. It's like having free arms and free legs, mate. It really is. All right, well, looking forward to it. Best of luck to both of you. Thank you. Amy? Hi, guys. Thanks for having us today. First up for Chris, um, I'd be interested to know you spoke about respecting your opponents, um, but also not really... Um, so, yeah, you, you respect your opponents, but you like to fight people that you have bad blood with. You don't want to be fighting people you're friends with. And I wondered, is having a bit of beef with them almost like your mental edge? Do you, do you need to rile up a little bit of that for you to really want to get in there and beat them up? No, I don't think so. I don't need that. I don't need to, like, create that, um, like, the first fight of the year for me. With Lance, Lance is someone I've known for since high school wrestling. We, our two high school teams wrestled against each other. Um, I've always had respect for him. Um, I've always considered him to be a friend. Um, my my one of my best friends. Um, growing up, went to Ohio State with him. That was his roommate when they were freshmen together. So it was literally like couldn't find a an ounce of anger anywhere on that one. But you still go in there like a professional and you fight hard you know you fight to finish the guy so I don't need it it just really helps me when I have it um I'm someone who I just do well when when uh when there's a little animosity involved some people don't some people like to be more relaxed but um I think that if I hone it the right way that it's definitely an edge for, for me thank you and uh for Brandon uh, where will I start here? So you have Irish roots, um, yep. Irish family. You fought in Ireland before in the three arena and very Irish name. And I'm <laughs> interested to know what you what you make of all the recent signings and PFL's move uh, to Europe specifically for Irish and UK fighters and the significance of that for people wanting to bridge that gap between their early pro careers and the higher levels and, and what you make of this format for fighters in this region of the world? That is a fantastic question. That's the best question of the day. So thank you. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, mate, incredible. I'm so happy that other people are getting the benefits that I've had. PFL have changed my life. They really have changed my life and I owe them so much. And I'm just so happy that they're coming to these shows now and they're going to start changing other people's lives. But there's a massive button in now. <laughs> Anyone who thinks they are walking into PFL and it's going to be an easy road. Forget about it. It's the most mentally and physically straining thing you will ever do in your life. I've seen other fighters talking about it, Mercier the other day and everybody else. And if you think you're just walking in here to pick up a few paychecks and have some fights, forget about it. It's going to be a long road. It's going to be hard. It gets real tough, but only the strong survive in here. And that's the truth. And finally, for myself, um, just... How, how is it that you keep morale up in, in this type of format? Like you've talked about how mentally draining it can be if you're dealing with injuries, the travel, etc. And maybe as well then if it's been good for you that you're, you had time abroad to settle within the promotion and get used to that format. And then like everyone's saying how great it is to come home. But I'm wondering, has it been great fighting abroad to settle and then to come back? Nah, listen, I got told last year when I landed, because it was COVID, they said, you can't leave the States for the duration of the tournament. Now, imagine that on your head. 
I'd already left the UK for six months prior to that. I was in Dubai training for the preseason. And then I landed in the States and they're like, okay, you can't go home. I'm like, what? I don't live here. I don't train here. So I had to just kind of wing that season, mate. I had to, obviously I had connections in San Diego with crews, et cetera, but I've never done a year there. You know what I mean? So like I had to kind of find my feet. I was sleeping on people's couches. I was making shit happen. I was going to Vegas here, there. And if I'm honest with you, by the semi-final, I was like, fuck this. I just want to go home. And that's the truth. That's me being brutally honest. This year is a different ball game, different energy. I'm around my people. I've got my dog here. I've got my, my coach that I've had from 16 years old. The Iranian wrestlers that first taught me wrestling. My old boxing trainers. Everything. The energy behind me is different over here. Trust me. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Thank you. All right. Just a few more. Eddie. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Sash Math with 5Bananas.com. Um, I just uh, actually want to talk to Chris and, you know, with this platform going on in the tournament style, and I know that you have this, like, animosity towards each other. How do you see yourself going through and getting a quick finish but keeping yourself unscathed going into the final? I mean, when I go in there, I don't really try to pick – to that extent where you're looking to like be unscathed and find a way to fight where like you don't um sustain anything because in the past i tried to like you know this is my fourth pfl playoff in the first like one or two especially with the when we were doing two fights in one night i was doing stuff like that i was trying to engineer the first fight and say like all right how can i go unscathed through the first bout so that the second bout i'm not like so beat up that I can't win because it was like an hour later that the or 45 minutes later that you're walking again and in 2019 with uh Loic at 55 that really played against me I like I took this like full-blown grappling approach in the first fight trying to like go um untouched and then I like my arms were gassed my my legs were gassed I had no juice for for the second opponent. So um, I, I threw that shit out. I stopped trying to do that. I take fights as, as they go now. You're, I've fought so many times. I've sparred so many times. I've been training for so long that you got to just, you know, take each bout how it goes. If you could follow up on that, um, basically, um, I'm sorry, it just kind of blinked there. Uh, That's all good. So follow Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Actually, if I could s switch over to Brennan, uh, I apologize about that. Um, Brennan, now hearing that as well, uh, do you have, what's your point of view on that, trying to get through this fight and looking to surpass him, knowing that he does have those four uh, seasons of experience? Um, yeah, he's got four seasons, but he's got zero championships. So it's like, you know, you can talk about the four seasons all you want, bro. Like, it don't mean shit, really. So, like, yeah. You know, he's a tough guy. There's not taking it away from him. He's tough. You know, he walks forward, likes to block with his nose. I mean, come on. Like, he's done well in these tournaments. But coming over to England and fighting me in my back garden, it's just a different ball game, mate. It really is. And it's like, we can sit here and dress the fight up, talk about, I'm going to do this, he's going to do that. But at the end of the day, 20th of August, next Saturday, we're going to have a fucking scrap, mate. We're going to lock the door and have a fight. That's it. I block with my face. Look at your nose. Who blocks with their face? Bro, you literally use your chin as a defense. I've never seen anything like it. Dude, you've been on the floor this season, like on your back. What are you talking about? First time in my career, bro. First time. And you know what? It oh. felt fucking great to oh, find out. Like, your eye was shut. What are you it, talking about? You oh, block it, What do you block things with besides your face? No, what? you block with in me. I've watched you take spinning hook kicks to the chin and walk forward. I'm like, wow, is it, what is this guy? This guy a zombie or what? You're just a zombie, bro. I've fought thousands of zombies, bro. Trust me, thousands of them. I am not just a zombie, bro. Oh, you're a zombie, bro. Trust me. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but... All of have brought zombies what? like you. Just walk See. forward and chop. You know what I might do to you? I might just take you down where you can't move and just start to have a conversation with you. You know, like what Khabib does sometimes to the guys. I think that's what you might get because I, I, I feel like you need, I need to make you quit and give up. Like 
you're putting it to a point I, where I need to break your ego. Like, you need to be broken. You really do. You got okay. too man. Too much. Good luck with that, bro. Too much to say. Good luck, brother. Mike, I'm going to actually just one. drop it there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Brendan. Hello, Chris. Mike Owens here. Um, anyone who's been on this call this afternoon or who's followed the build-up of this fight is and see the, the tension is evident between you two. Um, so I'd like to ask both of you individually, can you give me one thing you feel your opponent does better than you, skill set-wise? Chris, your first seed, so I'd like to ask you first, if possible. No, fuck him. <laughs> there he is, the little bitch. He's getting mad now again. Look at him. Little I am dead. Look at him. You're getting twitchy, bro. Relax, calm down, lad. Get it all fucking irate, bro. Relax. It's a media day. I'll see you next week. Could I, could I turn the question to Brendan, if possible, please? Brendan, could you give me one thing that skill is Chris does better than you skill set-wise? Um, nah, I don't think he does anything better than me. I really don't. I really don't. I think I'm a much better mixed martial artist than Chris Wade, and I actually believe that deep in my soul. Right. Perfect. Thanks, gents. Cheers, Mike. All right, that's all for media questions for today. You all might right. have to. Chris is getting really red. Chris is getting really mad. Look, we might have to call it a day, guys. Right, I think we should wrap it there. Thanks everyone for joining us. Of course, we're in Cardiff this weekend, uh, August thirteenth at the Motor Point Arena, and then the weekend after, we've got uh, this fight as well as uh, the the women's featherweights on the uh, the women's uh, lightweights on the card as well. August twentieth at the Copper Box Arena. Brendan, thank you. Chris, thank you. Safe travels over. I'll see you both in a week. Top man. Cheers, brother. Thanks, everybody.